are back with Dr. Donna Betts, who is an associate professor and research director in the Graduate Art Therapy Program at George Washington University. She's also the immediate past president of the American Art Therapy Association and formerly served on the board of directors of that, as well as the Art Therapy Credentials Board. So welcome, Dr. Betts, to the show. Thank you, Shannon and Nancy. I'm glad to be here. You're coming to us from, from Washington today? That's right, in my office at George Washington University Art Therapy Program. Okay. Let's start with what exactly is art therapy, because some people really just don't know. Sure. So art therapy is a regulated mental health profession, and it's integrated in the sense that it really, um, it's a wraparound uh, service for clients, and it's found in a, in a wide range of settings where individuals need any type of support, particularly mental health, as I mentioned, behavioral health. Um, it enriches the lives of individuals, families, and communities through active art making, the creative process, applied psychological theory, and human experience within a psychotherapeutic relationship. Okay. So it's used to, uh, in a variety of fields. Um, let's talk about art therapy in the autism world. How is it used in the autism world? Or how widespread so is it as well? It's, it's becoming increasingly widespread. Uh, it's used in school settings for children with autism. It's used in community settings. It's used also in anywhere really where services that are provided for individuals with autism can be found. Uh, of a range of ages. And you know, there is, because there is an increasingly, increasing awareness of the need for services, not just for children and adolescents, but also, you know, as folks age out of high school and enter early adulthood, uh, so that's another target area. The, those folks, of course, need support as well, right into adulthood and beyond, and so do the families. And so art therapists are often working in those contexts as well. So maybe if you could help us to understand, what does a typical session look like? How does it look different than an art class? And how does it look mm -hmm. different than a psychotherapy session? Right. And so, you know, one of the unique aspects of, of being an art therapist working with individuals with autism is that we do, we are trained to work with individuals of a range of abilities. I want to emphasize abilities because as art therapists, mental health professionals, we recognize that everyone has the capacity for creativity. We also recognize that, you know, someone on the autism spectrum is going to be very different from anyone else on the autism spectrum. So that, in other words, they're very unique. Every individual is very unique. So the art therapist is trained to learn how to tailor their treatment goals to that individual's needs. And, you know, I worked with people with autism for a number of years. And, you know, the kids I worked with, range in age from, I'd say, you know, eight all the way up to 18. And every single one of them was very different. And because I had such, such exceptional training at the George Washington University program, uh, the graduate level, um, and became a qualified art therapist, of course, I was able to, uh, you know, tailor the, the individual education program goals for each student I work with. I had students that, for example, were, although they had autism, were very, actually quite gifted intellectually in some areas and needed support in, uh, you know, emotional regulation or socialization and, and so forth. And I also had kids with, on the autism spectrum who, you know, needed more assistance with uh, areas related to intellectual capacity, such as perception, um, uh, the ability to, uh, you know, improve their academic skills, uh, cognitive skills, and, and focusing on the area. So again, we, we really are trained and prepared to work with all the different types of needs that people have. I'm fascinated. So when you're working on perception, for instance, <laughs> what, what might be a thing that you would do with a student to work on that with them? Right. So um, again, because art is so unique, obviously, in that we're working with visual skills as well as sensory, tactile, kinesthetic, um, for example. I also just want to give a nod to some of my colleagues in the other creative art therapy professions. So we have art, art therapy, which is a distinct profession that incorporates art materials like painting, drawing, and clay, uh, mixed media. And then we have music therapists who, of course, are experts and professionals working and also with people with autism, but with their specialization in music. Um, and they often work on, you know, with, with uh, speech language related goals as one example. We also have dance movement therapists who will who be able to work with a child or a, an adolescent or, or adult um, looking more at the, the bodily or sensory integration, for example. So um, we all have our different areas of training. We're all unique uh, professionals. So with art therapists, again, going back to your question about perception. Um, so, you know, art making involves a variety of skills. 
There is, by the way, a lot of research going on right now looking at the, a very uh, important area, which is neuroscience and art therapy, and the way the, what happens in the brain when someone's making art. Uh, what, what, what's the impact on our feelings? What's the impact on our, our skills, or especially our, our, um, in the case of somebody with sensory integration issues, for example, their ability to you know, coordinate uh, the muscle control with uh, the cognitive capacity and so forth, and that's where perception also has a role. So it's it's what is it's what you see and how you see it. Um, and you know, there's an artist by the name of St Stephen Wiltshire, who uh, is a British uh, man. Uh, he's now a man. He was a youth when his book, famous book, came out, which uh, he did a lot of architectural drawings. And he's somebody on the autism spectrum. As an example of someone who, speaking of perception, I mean, he would look at a building like the Tower of London, and then he'd be able to just draw it, and it would be a pretty incredible thing to see. I have to say that kind of a gift is very rare. Uh, we do see, of course, individuals who have exceptional drawing skills, but again, I mean, every individual on the autism spectrum is unique, and every single one of them is going to have any number of range of challenges and abilities as well. Fascinating. How can people get more information uh, if they're interested in what you're talking about? Where should they go? So I would uh, strongly recommend the only national organization whose mission is to advance the art therapy profession, which of course means as the profession gains recognition, more and more people are aware that there are therapists out there to help. So that would be the American Art Therapy Association. It's arttherapy.org. And uh, on the Art Therapy Association's website, uh, you will find any, a huge range of resources on actually the work that our therapists do with, with um, all the different types of individuals with whom we work. I also would refer people to the Art Therapy Credentials Board website. That's atcb.org. And the ATCB is the organization in, in the United States that regulates the art therapy profession by offering uh, professional credentials and board certification. So that site also includes um, a way for people to locate an art therapist and to find out if there's an art therapist in their area who specializes, in this case, for example, with people who have autism.